what are the circumstances that would need uh, to fall into place in order for this new uh, legislation to come into play? Morning to you, Belle. I think in many ways, actually, this legislation is purely symbolic, but definitely reassuring. And it might only actually come into play if Theresa May were to be removed as Prime Minister. Because, of course, remember that shift in sands she made earlier this week in which she said that she did not want to leave the EU without a deal and that she would seek an extension, as she put it, for as short as possible. Another way of reading short as possible, I think, is as long as necessary. Now, there are political difficulties for her if whatever extension involves the UK taking part in European elections. Elections, I think things are hurtling in that direction already. And ultimately, the length of the extension is in the gift of EU leaders. And they have said they don't want to have this recurring back and forth between London and Brussels, constantly seeking extensions. They want whatever extension there is to be long enough to actually achieve something. Uh, now, that legislation uh, that we've been talking about is, of course, now going to have to go from the House of Commons to the House of Lords to be uh, voted through there. Do you think it can expect safe passage? Yeah, I mean... Typically, the Lords is a bit of a rubber stamping exercise of what happens in the House of Commons. But, of course, throughout this Brexit process, we've seen precedent revived and rewritten. But what we have also seen over the past few years is that the Lords is consistently willing to defy the government and the House of Commons when it comes to matters regarding Europe, but generally in a kind of pro-EU way. So I think odds are that it will pass. Mm -hmm. Now, Tyg, it's clear that uh, Theresa May's move to get this cross-party consensus uh, comes rather late in the day for some uh, people in her party. They're not particularly pleased about it, are they? No, they're not. Equally, her other critics would say she should have done it sooner. But certainly the optics are bad when you're sitting down to talk about the future of Britain with somebody who you frequently said is uh, someone who's not fit to run the country and would ruin Britain were he to get into uh, power. That said, of course, those talks have not yielded anything. And I don't think expectations are particularly high because both of them are really doing this sort of this funny dance where they have to show that they're willing to sit down and talk to each other. But neither really has much to gain from actually being too agreeable with the other. And, you know, regardless of who Theresa May talks to about all of this, those hardline Brexiteers in her party are most furious of all that their hard Brexit has now slipped away from them. And whatever Brexit might come out of all this, the withdrawal agreement, whatever it turns out to be, will probably ultimately be softer. But they're angry at each other too because, of course, this is the very outcome that they were warned about if they didn't get on board with the withdrawal agreement. And while some of them listened, others didn't. Belle? Tyg, thank you very much. Tyg Enright.